I don't know that it needs to be higher. What it needs to be is open for women. It's not about arriving at 50-50 women, men. Mm -hmm. It's about having that same opportunity for both. In that sense, remember, there is that difference. Women get to choose combat, and in the Israeli military, men don't. And I'll remind all our viewers, we have the draft. Right. So we have this kind of balance, and in that sense, men are going to be sent to combat if they want to or not. Women are allowed to choose, and I think that these numbers Numbers are indicative that women do choose to do so, and it doesn't have to be on the 50-50 level. Good point there. Now, do leadership appointments like this, though, I mean, this is a high-level uh, position here, made the newspapers, obviously. Is that added value, greater impact, so to say, on the wider cause for gender integration? I think that one of the things that most of us don't always understand, and I say it out of great love for you, but that men aren't going to see in the same way, is that at high ranks, you don't see a lot of female models. It's about gender models in general. Okay. You have more same-sex or LGBTQ high-ranking in the Israeli Defense Forces than you have women, let alone having Druze men who were drafted, but there's such a small percentage. So to have a high-ranking female who is up there in a combat unit, it inspires those who want to go there. Again, it's not about, and now all women need to serve in combat, but it means that when you serve there, you can actually go the whole course. You actually can go the whole way, and that's amazing. Now, I want to bring it around a little personally for you. You held very important roles in the IDF. I'll, I'll, I'll say that. I want to tell us about your journey, if you will, the inherent challenges you encountered as a woman climbing to the top. I think that the main thing, and I'm sure that this amazing woman who's going to be the commander of a fighting unit in that sense, is that for my entire adult career, I was the only woman in the room. Now, you can poo-poo that and people say, yeah, right, of course. But for my entire life, I was the only woman in the room. There's a different type of dynamic, the way that people speak. When I walk in, I could make the you know most mundane aspects that men would talk to me because I'm a woman, so I know differently and an understanding. I think that these are the things that when you get more women in the room, more diversity in the room, more of all of us in the room, it's a much better environment in any workplace and in the military. So yes, I had that in my entire career. That's the strongest thing that I remember um, when I was pregnant and it was treated as if, oh, it's the woman who's pregnant. And I thought, really, because there are no women there. So for them, it's either going to be women who are clerks. And then there's this woman who's pregnant. It's as if my mind was erased. There are a lot of different gaps here that need to be crossed. Now, we look at the army in Israel so many, in so many ways as this precursor to, to good elements of society, that it, it sort of conditions the country's young people to better succeed. And honestly, that may be the secret sauce behind the country's entire success, a debate for another time. But in this realm, with this aspect, how do these minor successes, uh, people like this officer obviously getting to the top here, how does this translate out of the army? Does this type of attention or integration in the army have a wider effect down the road, out of the army even? So some of you may know that I'm one of the founders of a forum in Israel that's called the Deborah Forum, and it's most specifically about the changes that a woman like this, people like myself in the past can make. In the decision-making process inside Israel, Prime Minister, yes, everybody will say Golda, and she was, and that was so many years ago. But we have very few women in the decision-making process, certainly in the security um, realm, and it's said as if women can't. And, and I just apologize that completely, having diversity and decision-making, both in security and others. You don't have to take somebody who was the top-ranking general to be able to be the prime minister of Israel. That's a terrible idea. So when you have breakthroughs like this, you get that sense that women are stepping on in. And again, it's not about making the equality for equality's sake. It's about society using all of what it has, all of its diversity, to make us all a better community. I think that touches on uh, one of the successful attributes of the national draft. They are, aren't the military apparatus having the choice for really the country's best and brightest and, and everyone at some level. So that's hitting on a key element of the country's success right there. Mary Eisen, as always, thanks for being with us here. Another important topic today. Thank you. A pleasure.